Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Have you ever been out hiking and you've stumbled across a scene like this, but you don't have an ND filter and you don't have a tripod? Well, I'm going to show you a post-production technique using Affinity Photo where you could take an image like this with water that looks like that and use Affinity Photo to get soft flowing water. I really like hiking and when I do hike I often like to travel light so I won't bring a tripod and I won't bring any ND filters with me. Invariably when I do that I'll run across flowing water such as this and of course this flowing water would look best if it was blurred and in order to capture that in camera you're going to need a long exposure and to get that long exposure you're probably going to need a tripod and ND filters. Well. About four or five years ago, I read an article at digitalphotographyschool.com that explained a Photoshop technique to get the blurring water. And it works very well. Recently, I did a video where I demonstrated that technique using Photoshop, using these images, or this image, I should say. Well, um, somebody posted a comment and they mentioned that this is much easier to do in Affinity Photo and they were kind enough to put a link to Affinity Photo's YouTube page or YouTube channel where they demonstrate the technique. Well, I thought I'd do this video where I'll use that exact same image I used in Photoshop and we'll blur the water in Affinity Photo and I'm going to add a little twist to it, something else that you may want to consider doing. So. The technique is, if you're out and you encounter flowing water and you don't have a tripod or ND filters, take a number of images, hold your camera as still as possible, and take at least one image a second, and take at least five to ten images. I've taken as few as five, and I've taken as many as twenty. So in this case, I stood as still as possible, and I took a series of ten images. I had my camera in high or low speed continuous, and I fired off maybe one image every second or half second or so. So I have these 10 images and you could see that there's slight movement between each of the images because I was hand holding it. Once you get home, load the images on your computer, open up Affinity Photo and what we're going to do is load the images as a stack into Affinity Photo. To do that, go up to File, go to New Stack, this new stack dialog box will appear. Click Add. Then navigate to where the images are on your hard drive. And in this case, as I mentioned, I had 10 of them. So select all 10 and click, click Open. Next, you want to make sure that Automatically Aligned Images is checked because it was handheld and there was some movement between each image. So allow Affinity uh, Photo to align them. And then how do you want the alignment done? Choose Perspective. There's two choices there. I found Perspective works best. Do not click Live Alignment. Well, you could, but it will take a little longer. So just uh, don't click that. It will go a little quicker. And then click OK. Now, Affinity Photo, it acts like it's not doing anything, but it's taking those 10 images, and it's going to automatically align them. And it's going to stack them in such a way that you'll see, once they appear, that the water will be blurred right away. And that is much faster, much easier than Photoshop. There were a lot more minor steps in Photoshop to get that water to blur. So once it appears, you'll see that the water will be blurred already. Okay, it's back and you can see the water is blurred already. And if we look over here at the right hand layers panel, you can see that it has the live stack group it's called. And you could fold that open by clicking on this little like uh, play button and you can see there's the 10 images. You could look at each individual image if you'd like by holding in the option key and clicking on an image. So there's one image and you can see the water's not blurred. There's another image, another image. So those are the 10 images I used. And since it's aligned, aligned the images, you could see on some of them we're getting some blank pixels because it aligned those images. Now to show the blur again, you know, there's the blur. Now I mentioned that it does a specific type of stack to blur the water. If you look over here to the right, you'll see there's a little X with a tilde sign over it. If you click on that, you can see that these are all the different stack methods. 
Right now it's using the median method. If you hover over every the, any of these, you'll see a sample of what that would look like. There's mean, and usually mean or median work best for this method. There's outlier, that of course doesn't work well. There's maximum, that looks okay. Minimum, there's range, that of course doesn't work at all. There's mid-range, I kind of like mid-range. There's total, standard deviation, variance, skewness, kurtosis, and entropy. Of course, those don't work at all. So usually, as I mentioned, mean or medium work best. I also liked mid-range. I thought mid-range works pretty well. Now, if I had to choose between mean or median, I think I kind of like mean a little better. So we'll just pick that. So you can see the water is blurred and it lined the images fine. Now, you could be done at this point in... You know, it is like way faster than Photoshop, isn't it? But in some instances, when you're doing this multiple image sequence, you may have other parts of the image. You, have, you may have movement in other parts of the image, and you don't want that to be stacked in such a way that it looks blurred or anything. So in this case here, it was dead air. The trees weren't moving. The leaves weren't moving. Only the water was moving. But you may be in a situation where it's a little windy out and the treetops are moving, and then you'll see blur there. And you may not want that blur there. If that's the case, what you could do is select any single image inside of the stack. I, I'm just going to select the top one and duplicate that layer by hitting Command-J. So now we have that duplicated. Then drag that duplicate layer to the top of the entire stack. So it's at the very top. And once you do that, you'll notice our water is no longer blurred. But below that, I'll turn that layer off, we have the blurred water. Now again, actually you could see right here, this, this branch right here is a little bit blurred. There's without, there's with the blur, without, with the blur. So there is a little bit of movement on this branch here. Now, again, in your case, if you're, it's a really windy day, you may have a lot of movement. So what we're going to do now is we'll have this layer active, and you can see we don't have our blurred water anymore. Add a layer mask down here. Just click on the mask icon, and we have a mask. Now click on the mask. So the mask is active. Get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard to get a brush. Under the color swatches, make sure black is the foreground color. And then make sure again, I'll reiterate, make sure you're clicked on the mask. And just paint in black on the mask. And what you're doing is you're allowing that stack below where it blurred the water to come through. So we'll just come through and we'll do a really quick messy job but we'll blur the water. And I'll just, again, go very quick. So it looks horrible. But you get the idea, right? This is a way you could blur the water. And you could control where the blur is. Maybe you don't want the blur in a certain spot. Or you want it on part of the water and not all the water, whatever. If you found that you accidentally painted over an area, uh, then just paint in white, and you'll see you could undo what you just did. But we're going to paint black. All right, so you could blur the water very easily. And that's my little twist to what they did over at Affinity Photo. Now, if you want to look at the mask itself and see where you painted, um, hold the Option key in and click on the mask, and you could see the mask now. And if you missed any little spots, come in. Do it. Just click on the mask again to go back to the regular mode so we could see our blurred water. So that person, thank you, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, who commented on the Photoshop video that it's much easier to do in Affinity Photo. Yes, it is. I agree. It's much easier to do, and that's how you do it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.